Well, I wish somebody would give God praise right there. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, clap your hands and give Him praise right there. Father, forgive them, for they knew what, not what they did to put me up behind him. <laughs> Today I want to share with you from a thought, but this man. Somebody say with me, but this man. <laughs> Written in Luke 23 and 43. All the words which I'm supposed to share today, verily I say unto you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. All this starts when Jesus is on the cross. They crowned him and said, this is the king of the Jews. They're home to male factors who railed on him saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Yes. Another one answered and rebuked him and said, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man, I thought I had a church here. I wish somebody would help me say, but this man, uh, have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. At this point in his walk on life, Jesus had experienced the greatest pain that any man could experience. It was the pain of betrayal. Pain of betrayal from the ones who had said they would be with him for always. Pain of betrayal from the ones who had walked with him and seen him do great miracles. Jesus had so much going on in his heart and mind but he had destiny in his mind which was even greater than the betrayal. I'd like to say to somebody in this room, if you can just get past your pain, you'll get to your promise. Come on, just look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you can just get past your pain, you'll get to your promise. Isn't it funny how people are with you when things are going well? But when things start going bad, they start talking crazy. Kyla was like everybody else. He was selfish. He was like we are. What's in it for me? He was hoping to see some miracle by Jesus. And Herod had arrayed him in this gorgeous purple robe. And now Pilate and Herod, who had been the worst of enemies, now become friends. I don't know about you, but nothing hurts more when your enemies become friends with your friends. And the friends you thought you had now become your enemies. I know y'all don't have those kind of friends that get real quiet when you come to the table. I know you don't have those kind of friends that act kind of some kind of way when they're around other folks that you thought was your friend. And Jesus said, I've got to keep focused. I can't let my emotions derail me from my promise. He said, because I'm looking down the line and I see a black boy that's got to be saved. Yeah. I see some folk that need me, going to need the blood to shed from my body. Yeah. Somebody lift your hands and shout out hallelujah. hallelujah. And the argument ensues. One selfish man says, save us and save yourself. Yeah. If you be so bad, I heard about what you did for other folk. Why don't you do something for us about this situation? Isn't that like some folks say, I want to know what is in it for me and what can you do to help me out of my trouble? But the other man said to him, after the selfish man talked his talk, the unselfish man said, do you even realize who this is? Do you, do you even realize who you are talking to? He said, now I deserve everything I'm getting. I deserve to be on the cross, but this man, I don't get nobody in here. He said, I deserve punishment for everything I've done but this man. Yeah. I wish I had a church in here. I, I deserve to die today but this man. Yeah. The only thing he did was he healed the sick. The only thing he did was he raised the dead. The only thing he did was open up deaf ears and he opened up blinded eyes. The only thing he did was fed 5,000 hungry 
people. But this man, oh, somebody talk back to me again.